Got your new AI-powered Samsung S24 Ultra? Well, make sure to disable or turn off these settings for better security and privacy. The new S24 Ultra is a new beast with the introduction of a whole slew of AI tools, along with Knox Matrix 22 pass keys. And Samsung surprised us all when they announced the S24 lineup will be the first with seven years of security updates from Samsung, which now matches the newest Google Pixel series. That's exciting. So new phone, new security and privacy settings that we need to make sure that we get right. As with all Android phones, there are going to be some settings that allow for data collection or retention policies. Now, luckily for us, most of these settings are optional or they can be disabled, but many of them come enabled by default. But on the plus side, we also got the new perks of Knox Matrix 22, which provides pass keys on the S24 series. Samsung Knox Matrix gives you end-to-end -end encryption for data and settings that are backed up along with better hardware security and real-time protection against vulnerabilities plus that integration of our favorite pass keys. So I would say device security from Samsung is awesome but we want to make it better and keep our privacy in mind too. Now if you missed any of these during the first setup some of them are available during setup then you can still access them in your settings app. Let's go ahead and get started with the newest of new new AI. Open your settings app and scroll Scroll all the way down to advanced features. Up at the top is advanced intelligent. Now this is the section that is new. This is where you're going to find all those new AI features. It is important to note that Samsung does have a section on your phone about AI. They explain some important details about how it is used and for what. For example, you have full control over when they are used. Everything requires a button press or enabling them in the settings. Personal data is not used for training and data is not used for ads or machine learning. And images created using the photo editor include a watermark to show that it was edited with AI, but apparently those can be removed pretty easily. But if you still want to disable those features, then this is how you do it. Each of these settings can be customized. For example, if you click into the live translate feature, it will show you what it does, and then you can turn it on or off. Under that writing assist feature, your entered text will be processed, but not stored by Samsung. This also mentions that for style and grammar suggestions, you can turn on process data only on device at any time in Samsung keyboard settings. Now Summarize says the same thing about summarizing a web page using Samsung internet. Data will be processed but not stored by Samsung. And then you have the same thing with photos. Now down at the very bottom, we have this option to process data only on device. Processing on device adds privacy by never processing that data online, but it will not provide the best results. Also, some AI features do require the online processing, so if you disable this, then find one of those tools is not working right, that's probably why. If you don't want any AI features to be on, then I would suggest going into each of those separate feature menus and disabling them manually. Now, a while back, I think this might have been last year, I did a video showing you 15 Android settings that you should turn off for security and privacy, and these were more generic for any Samsung phones, though some could also be found on all Android phones. Since I already covered those, I will mention them here, but will not be going into as much detail on the context of those settings. So watch that video for a deeper dive into each of those. Now we have clipboard access. In this menu, you scroll down to the bottom and click on additional privacy controls, then enable alert when clipboard is accessed, which will notify you if an app accesses text, images, or other other copied contact. Next, we have diagnostic data. Back in the security and privacy menu, choose more privacy settings. First, if send diagnostic data is enabled, go ahead and turn that off. Google also has a usage and diagnostics setting, so click into that one and turn it off for Android. Continuing in the more privacy settings menu is an area called Android personalization. Disable Android personalization service if you don't want data from one app to be used to personalize content in another app. This data is stored locally and it is not sent to Google or Samsung. In this section, you can also review which apps share location data. For me, that is none. Android system intelligence is a setting that allows for device learning based on your interactions, which can also show you smart keyboard replies, speech recognition, etc. You can disable these or clear data that your device has learned. Below this is activity controls. So go 
in there and click on activity controls, choose your Google account, and we will start at the very top. Disable or customize the web and app activity settings. You can also uncheck the sub settings, which includes Chrome history and voice and audio activity. And then I recommend turning on auto delete, which will delete all of this data after a set amount of time. So you don't need to keep on remembering to go into this page and deleting everything manually over and over. Location history is under this. So scroll down and we can turn off location history, which is pretty self-explanatory. I won't go over this one. And then there is YouTube history, also self-explanatory, which you can also disable. Below all of those is personalized ads, which you can click into to customize your ad experience with Google. Now I showed you mine last time and it was pretty funny how Google was targeting me with ads, but that's always a good one to go through and customize. Go ahead and click on ads. You can delete this data by clicking on delete advertising ID. You can also customize the types of data that apps can collect to show you ads under ad privacy. Now, if you are finding this video helpful, a subscribe would mean so much to me. Subscribing is a simple way of showing me which videos you find valuable and helpful, and it tells me which direction I should take my channel in. We're almost to 118,000 subscribers. I can't wait to get there and another huge and exciting moment and goal for my YouTube channel. I also wanted to say big Patreon shout out to Daniel, Will, Michael, and Sean. You can join them and support my channel by going to patreon.com slash Shannon Morse for perks like early video access and a private discord. As usual, all the videos on my channel are free to watch, and I thank my YouTube members and patrons for making that possible. Let's go ahead and move on to Permissions Manager. So let's find our Permissions Manager menu. Go into your settings, scroll down to Security and Privacy, under Privacy, and then click on Permissions Manager. Each and every single app you install on your phone may ask you if you wanna grant it permissions to access other parts of your phone. If you ever accidentally grant permissions and you wanna remove them later, you can go into the settings page and turn off permissions for each app. Clicking into an app like Instagram, for example, it only gets camera access when I'm using the app, but clicking on permissions lets me see everything that Instagram has access to. From the security and privacy menu, you can also see which apps have access permissions in the last 24 hours, and you can audit those as well. Now let's go back a little bit. If you see a green shield at the top of your security and privacy page, which we've basically been living in for half of this video, then you're in good shape. But if it's any other color like yellow or red, you should scan for any issues on your phone. Make sure your lock screen is on, check that your accounts are secure. This is also where you can enable additional device protection like app protection, and you can also check for updates. Now, I think it's a really good idea to audit these settings from time to time, just whenever you think about it, just to make sure that everything is consistent with your current lifestyle. Okay, let's go on to additional security settings. You should turn on biometric unlock via face or fingerprint, or if you are worried about law enforcement forcing you to unlock your phone, turn on your lock screen and add a pin or a passcode instead. Now under this setting, we have auto blocker. New for this year is this auto blocker setting, which is pretty interesting as this will automatically block threats or suspicious activity, such as blocking apps from unauthorized sources, turning on security checks via apps and blocking commands over USB-C. Now this can also block images sent over messages, which are suspected of containing malware, and it can block software updates made via USB cables. That's a pretty cool setting, and I'm really glad that Samsung decided to include that. Under more security settings, you can set up a secure folder, which will allow you to store private or sensitive files or folders in a secure folder. Secure Wi-Fi, which to be honest, sounds like a built-in VPN to me. It comes with subscription plans after you hit a certain amount of data. So it totally sounds like a VPN. And enhanced data protection will also protect your cloud data with end-to-end -end encryption. This one encrypts backups and it syncs your data. I also wanted to mention Samsung Pass, which allows you to, when logged into your Samsung account, keep applications and accounts secure with biometrics 
and it will remember login info for convenience. Now, disable installing unknown apps. Any apps you might wanna install should be available in the Google Play Store or your phone's app store. So unless you are developing your own apps or you're debugging or doing some kind of custom thing with your own ROM, you really don't need to install unknown apps from any kind of weird locations. Next, we're gonna disable make passwords visible. Now this option lets you see password characters for just a split seconds whenever you type them in before they change over to an asterisk or a dot. All right, go back to security and privacy and click on lost device protection. One setting I do want to point out is offline finding, which can allow you to find your lost device even when it's not connected to a network. And it does this by allowing other Android devices. Now you can enable this if you are worried about losing your phone, but if you do, then I recommend encrypting offline location. This means that your device's location is encrypted when it's sent to other nearby Android devices, and it can only be decrypted by a pin that you set. Next, let's go ahead and chat about connections that are pretty serious security and privacy issues. Now with data privacy getting more and more important, I always use YubiKeys to protect my accounts. These little devices replace those six digit codes that are sent to you via text message or email, and they are more secure because an attacker would physically need to steal this device and have your password in order to log into your accounts. See, attackers can easily trick you into typing your password password and a six digit code into a fake site. But hundreds of sites have upgraded to support these little hardware keys instead, using a different protocol that never sends a six digit code for anybody to steal. The YubiKey will not even work if you plug it in while trying to log into a fake website because it will recognize the fake site long before we might notice any red flags. To use this device, all you have to do is plug it into your phone or your laptop or tap it with NFC to easily log in. No more messing up those six digit codes when typing them in or waiting for a text message to come in with your one-time code. I use YubiKeys absolutely anytime they are supported because they make logins a lot faster and a lot more secure. And since it is a one-time purchase, it's way cheaper than getting your identity stolen. And I have a deal just for my viewers. Go to my link, it's yubi.co slash shannon-2024 to automatically get $5 off a YubiKey 5 NFC and watch my full 2FA playlist to learn everything you need to know about these handy little keys. That's yubi.co slash Shannon 2024 for $5 off and a huge thank you to Yubico for sponsoring this episode. Okay, we're back with Wi-Fi and Bluetooth scanning, which are now under location services and I found it by typing into search. Now both of these continuously send pings on various frequencies to look for local Bluetooth devices or Wi-Fi networks even when Wi-Fi and Bluetooth is off in your drop-down menu. This not only could drain your battery, but it also lets attackers know where you are within a vicinity. I also use search for usage data access. Now this is now found under apps and digital well-being. At the top, it tells us that these apps can monitor other apps that you use, it knows who your ISP is, and some other usage data. Disable any of those that should not have access to that information. And we're almost done, customization service is found under Samsung account security and privacy, or you can do as I did and just search for it. This is an optional setting that lets apps customize your experience based on your interests and routines. You can disable it for any apps that you see here that do not need access. As you can see, I have had this disabled since I first set it up on this phone, so it is entirely off. But I'm gonna turn this on so that you can see what this page looks like. This page has a big toggle right at the top. Then you can click into customize apps to disable any apps one by one. In your camera app, this is the last one we're gonna check on. Choose the settings gear icon and scroll down to location tags. If this is on, turn this off. Now before commenting to tell me, but you forgot about this, please watch my previous video on this subject because I might've already covered it because I did like 15 different settings in that video as well. Now your S24 phone is all privatized and securitized, but you can still use it for all your regular day-to-day -day doom scrolling. Thanks for watching. Bye, y'all.